This video will focus on neutralization reactions, getting us to the point where we understand when you put an acid and a base together, um, how they become uh, neutral or water. So, so far all the acid-base interactions we've looked at have been essentially when a hydrogen gets transferred from one to the other, kind of that Bronsted-Lowry interaction. Neutralizations of an acid-base are slightly different. Okay, in these reactions, what we're looking at is that the hydrogen formed by the acid component and the hydroxide formed by the base component, they're actually going to come together and interact to form water. That's why they're called neutralization reactions. If you take the H from the acid and the OH from the base and put them together to make water, you're going to eventually end up with a neutral solution if you have enough acid and enough base present. So here's two example reactions. You can see essentially it's, it's a double displacement reaction. So you're reacting an acid with a base. And that H and OH are coming together to make water. And then the other two, um, anion and cation, are coming together to make a salt. So every neutralization reaction, if you react an acid with a base, and in this case the base is usually an Arrhenius definition with a hydroxide group, you're going to make a water and a salt. Now one thing to be aware of, depending on how many H's and OH's there are bonded, obviously we won't necessarily have just a one-to-one -one scenario, but the products are always water and a salt, regardless of how many H's and OH's are present. H is plus one, OH is minus one, so the molecule they make always comes together in a one-to-one -one relationship, and then we use our coefficients in order to balance out the whole reaction. So when you have a neutralization reaction where both the acid and the base are considered strong, our neutralization point, the point at which they are neutral, will have a pH of seven. Again, what neutral means is we've gotten to a moment where there's no more acid and no more base, all that's left is the water. That's why it's a pH of seven for strong. For strong, all the H and OH came off and came together to make water. Now, if we have a neutralization interaction with um, not a strong acid and strong base combo, so like a weak acid with strong base or a weak base with strong acid, you don't end up producing a neutral reaction that has a pH of seven. But the one thing that's consistent about all neutralization reactions is that at that point of neutralization, which is called the equivalency point, that is the point where how many H's you have in the reaction and how many OH's you have in the reaction are equal. Not concentration, moles. We want them to fully interact and react to make only water. So it doesn't matter here the identity of the acid and base in terms of weak and strong. This is an actual chemical reaction. So the reason we're doing it separate from this idea of like dissociation is because it's not about dissociation. The H and OH are not reacting because they dissociated. They're actually chemically reacting with one another to make new products. So the H and OH come from the substances to make water and a salt. What we end up doing with our neutralization reactions or our equivalency point is we use it to figure out how much acid or base was present in a system. So we go back to using stoichiometry in order to relate amounts. So for this problem, if you have 10 mils of a 0.5 molar solution of sodium hydroxide, the question is how many mils of acetic acid do you need to neutralize them? The one thing we know about the neutral point is that moles equal moles. So essentially the stoichiometric relationship of the acid to the base has to be equal at the neutralization point, at the point where they're neutral. So to do this math, we always start out with a measured amount, and you want to start out with a measured amount of the thing you know. So we're going to start out with a measured amount of sodium hydroxide. I'm going to put that straight into liter. And then I always want to get to mole, which I can use the concentration to do. Now to get from moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of acetic acid, I have to know their mole relationship. If you do a chemical reaction between the two, you'll see that it's a one-to-one -one relationship. For every one acetic acid, you need one sodium hydroxide in order to make the products. So that means our mole relationship is just one to one. Then I can go from moles to liters using the concentration of the acetic acid, and that will give me an answer. If I calculate this out, I get 0 0.022 liters, which is the same thing as 22 milliliters. And that's the volume then of acetic acid at that concentration that I would need to react with this amount of sodium hydroxide in order to neutralize it. If I used more or less of it, I wouldn't end up at neutral because I'd have some of the acid or some of the base 
left behind. Now what happens if it's not a one-to-one -one relationship? In this problem we have um, sulfuric acid reacting with potassium hydroxide and the assumption here is then to get to neutralization we have to get to a point where all the H's and OH's react and interact. We will get complete reaction of these H's with these OH's because again it doesn't have to do with dissociation, it has to do with a chemical reaction. So when it comes to the mole relationship this time it is not going to be one to one, it's going to be a one to two or a two to one depending on what you're solving for. So the big thing of this is just stoichiometry again, we're using concentration so you can get from volume to mole using concentration and then the mole relationship will always be based on how to get these uh, to get to just water being left over. So the perfect stoichiometric amount and it won't always be one to one depending on what the coefficients are. Tomorrow we'll talk about how this math is done in lab but to understand how it's done in lab you have to know something about indicators.